Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. So please follow the the the, the awrads and the wazifas of the shaykhs and uh, don't prescribe for yourself anything right now because anybody who becomes hyper alert they, they don't have the dress of that protection. So it's like we said in the other talk I think a few weeks ago that if you take medicine, medicine's good for you doesn't mean you take 10 tablets. It can have a different effect upon you. If you're not one who been built up the zikr may open something that you haven't prepared yourself to defend or to push away and then can begin to have problems. So the Naqshbandi awrad is on the app and Ramadan is the time where you appreciate it the most that please download the Muhammadan Way app, click on Ramadan, entire wazifa and etiquette is there. Anybody who wants the attention of the shaykhs, support the shaykh. You know just calling and all the time texting and emailing, 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 at least support their mission and their dawah. And we have people who even have offices and businesses and they are familiar with that concept. Why would it be different for Allah's servants? If you're going to take their office time, going to take time away from them, going to, to have their attention, support their mission. That shows that you have an ihtiram and a respect. And that's why Allah said, when you go to Sayyidina Muhammad don't go empty-handed. This was the adab of Islam. When you go somewhere, don't go empty-handed. Allah is teaching the people don't keep going to Prophet and then take all his time and talk all the time, say your thing and go. And don't come empty handed, come with a gift. Why? To show the ihtiram and the respect. This was the Islamic adab and the Islamic way, inshaAllah. Is there any particular salawat that can be recited for the upliftments of ailments? Yeah, all the salawats on the app. The, the salawat al nariyah is to take away many calamities and difficulties. Salawat al fatiha is the one that Mawlana most prescribing and most being recommended now for openings. Because you're asking from the haqq of Prophet to open through that haqq every, every thing that is closed and that the realization that Prophet's key must open everything. All these salawats when we look at the English and look at the Urdu, the Arabic, whatever language we're looking at, it's teaching us with the shaykh's teachings that you're not going to Allah's door. If you think you're going to Allah's door yet your character is not correct. If you think, I have a problem, I have to go to Mushkil Gusha, the one whom takes my problems away. So I go to Prophet I go to Ahlul Bayt, I go to Ashab and Nabi and say that, give me an audience with Sayyidina Muhammad as soon as they inspire, make this durood, that is your audience with Prophet Because you're greeting him with a beautific greeting, oh the one who takes calamity, the one who takes difficulty, it's like a praising. You're, you're not asking in a, in a regular language, you're asking in a beautific way, of course Prophet then listening. And then you're giving and doing and supporting. Of course then every difficulty opens, every mushkilat opens. That's why he said, now the medicine is intense amounts of salawats to the level that you can and what's written on to the awrad. And to anytime you're sitting at home open up your mawlid book and do your mawlid in the home, get your children to recite the mawlid, play the mawlid in the house, the house becomes a beatific energy of angelic forces that stop the shaitans from entering into that pre- precincts inshaAllah. Sayyidi, what does it mean when during meditation we start hearing sounds? It means you're starting to hear sounds. <laughs> it's good because everything is about becoming more subtle. That Allah describes you have ears but they don't hear, they have eyes and they don't see. What we're trying to open is the second sense of everything. Every sense has two doors. I have eyes, as soon as I close them, my spiritual eye will open. If I live my life only on my physical eyes, I have to see everything. I have to see it to believe, never my spiritual eye opens. My spiritual eye opens when I take a life of saying, I don't trust with my eyes because I saw so many deceit with my eyes, 
I'm not going to rule my life by my eyes, so I closed my eyes. As soon as I close my eyes, I say, Ya Rabbi, like I'm in my grave, I don't want to see from these eyes. Make my zikr, make my zikr, then Allah begin to make the sensitivity of your spiritual eye to open. Same thing then when I clean my ears, I don't want to hear the bad, I don't want to hear the, the, the unnecessary things. I want to walk away from every type of unnecessary talk. We don't sit and confront and argue people. It's not the dunya, dunya is like, oh where are you going? You're like chicken, you're walking away, why are you walking away from everything? Say, yes, of course, every type of difficulty my job is to walk away. That's what Prophet would get up and walk away. We don't sit and begin to argue with shaitan because you're not no longer dealing with the person, you're dealing with their devil that's now in their presence. We walk away from every type of argument, no confrontation, just thank you very much, peace be upon you, I'm out. As soon as you guard your ears and listen to salawat, listen to salawat and you're playing the salawat and closing your eyes, your ears and your spiritual hearing becomes more sensitive, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, how should zikr be done, loudly or silently? Depending upon what zikr. Yeah, you do your zikr in a… Not a loud voice because you'll come across people who Allah, 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 Allah is, is entertaining maybe for a few people who are watching you but the correct adab is uh, Allah, Allah, Allah so that I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it and I'm meditating Allah, 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 Allah. At a higher level of energy Naqshbandiya is built on khafi zikr but that's a place where somebody has to understand they, they got to that place in which their meditation is so strong that when they train in their meditation they don't move and they enter into a state of death where nothing is moving on them. As soon as they even want to breathe or make a sound it causes their soul to come back into their body. To avoid that and that's why Mawlana Shah Naqshaban, Fard al Alam of Fard al Arsh, in the khatam of his shaykh would walk out and go to another room. And many of the, the students were being angered. The why he leaves, he thinks he's, he's, what is he doing? When the shaykh is giving zikr, he was leaving. That doesn't mean now everybody leave when we're doing zikr, <laughs> but his state was so high that his shaykh gave him permission because he has to go somewhere where he's completely silent and he's not going to make any sound means that he entered into a state of death so that his heart is making the zikr not his tongue and he doesn't even bring the zikr to the tongue. It's all through his living heart, the heart's alive and it's going um, 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 um. and through their breath they're breathing in that zikr and that power. But for now to imitate it's a voice in which I can hear. So that the angel's hearing and I'm hearing and the energy around is also hearing that zikr. It doesn't have to be so loud that it's disruptive for other people, inshaAllah. Um, someone here that who's taken bayah with a representative of Mulana Shaykh Nazim mm. in uh, 2011 and they continue to do muraqaba with Shaykh Nazim now? Sure, wherever your heart is, is every stream and every river and every ocean, however big and small, it leads to Sayyidina Muhammad So whomever your heart is feeling that connection, Mawlana Shaykh Nazim, Shaykh Hisham, Shaykh Adnan, Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghestani, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Adil, all these big shaykhs of the Naqshbandiya, whomever your heart feels that affinity and that love, you close your eyes and try to connect. If you don't feel that connection with that shaykh then go to the next shaykh until you feel the connection. Many, many, many feel a strong attraction to Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghestani, Naqib al-Ummah wa Iz al-Ummah because of the amount of qudra coming from his holy eyes. As soon as you look at his face and, and, and stare and stare at the face and then close your eyes and meditate that I want to be under your nazar and your tajalli or Sultan al-Awliya, Ma'an Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani and all those uh, great representatives whomever your heart feels that affinity and that connection with. And they, when you truly connect with them, they dress you, bless you 
and they will eagerly want to take you to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Nobody wants to keep you for themselves. They are also shy to represent and to keep themselves to be present. So as soon as you learn how to do that meditation, they are the doors towards the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Yes, Shaykh, uh, uh, can I join the Sobat of Naqshbandi even though I'm from another silsila? The Sobat? Definitely. This again, that was the answer from the other question is that we're all representing the way to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Anyone is, is welcome to take from that fountain, it's a fountain coming from the heart of Prophet is asking like, can I take from this kawthar or from that kawthar or from this kawthar? Whatever kawthar you think you find, because anything coming from the heart of Prophet is kawthari, it's a kawthar. It's a fountain that if you drink from that knowledge, it bring you to life. If you feel that, drink from it. But what they ask is that when you take those knowledges, you have to understand there's a responsibility. And these knowledge is, is like breastfeeding. As soon as you've been fed from somebody, that person is your mother. So in Islamic law, you can't take your children around to be fed by every lady in the village because then that child can't marry anyone in that village because everyone becomes his mother. So it's very specific on who is going to feed that child. If Allah has that requirement for a child, imagine then for the shiukh. Who, who are feeding you from the reality of their knowledges. Ilma laduni wa hikmati bi saliheen. Allah give them from the two milks of their reality to dress the servant. They give you ilma laduni, a heavenly knowledges and a hikmah in their training. They train you on how to have hikmah so that you don't use the knowledge incorrectly and understand it incorrectly. So anyone whom you're taking that source of knowledge you owe something to them, you can't just bounce around. So then if you have too many mothers, you're going to have difficulty. But if you're just watching YouTube on how to make wudu, you know, that's a thousand people you can watch. But once you start to take ilm al-laduni, then you have a responsibility and a lock with those people, inshaAllah. Uh, Sayyidi, what is the best way to do muhasaba? Every night. People, places and things that you don't like, take a writing of why. Muhasaba is to take an accounting of oneself, like an inventory. You say, oh what are all the people, places and things I don't like but the importance of this inventory is what is my role in not liking them. Means the blame is always to myself. I don't like this person because they have this car. But what is my role in that is that I'm jealous that his car is nicer than my car and that's the sickness Allah wants you to identify. Other people's accounting is they put the blame on everyone except themselves. Especially Western understanding is they raise the nafs, self, nafs awareness. What all these realities of self-glorification, uh, be happy with yourself, the self is the nafs. Our way is to defeat the nafs and that the nafs is to blame for everything wrong. So once I identify why I don't like this person, be really truthful, why I don't like him because he has a car, a nice car, I, I'm jealous of the car he has. When I put myself to be guilty, I'll find the character defects. Those defects are what Allah wants us to find. If you're finding the defect is jealousy, enmity, anger, all of these then are the root of the sickness. The majority now is anger. And anger we said is like a fire, it's like a pilot light. Everyone's heart has a little light. And Allah wants to know if this light, are you going to strike it for Divine love or are you going to make it to be a source of explosion within your being? So then every bad quality comes like a little gas, it drops on the light and then Allah wants to see jealousy. Did you explode and turn on fire? So the pilot light is already there, Allah is going to test it before He makes you to be from ahbab and lovers. Enmity, it lights up. Now the most dangerous one is anger. 
you know, the light is there, just a little bit of gas of anger comes in, instead of controlling and containing it, it explodes like an explosion. And this is the difficulty that everyone facing now in their muhasaba, how to control their anger. And the biggest defense against anger is wudu, is to keep 24 hours a day to the best of our ability, our state of wudu is to wash, pray two cycles of wudu and don't leave the wudu as if you're going to be attacked and killed if you're, if you're out of wudu. You don't leave wudu, you don't go to work and just you know do whatever your business is and don't keep your wudu, you keep your wudu at all times. Shaitan is watching to see you leave wudu and your shield of protection drop and full on attack into the being which now that attack can lead to severe sickness in this time of difficulty. That may have answered someone's question, are negative energies attracted to some more than others? Yeah, some whom Allah gave as a gift, more positive energy. There's more, there are people whom Allah has given as a gift to be of a subtle nature and they have a tremendous positive energy. As a result of that energy they pull in and are sensitive to every negative energy. And as a result of that they have to be extra careful. Don't expose themselves, don't put their face on the internet, don't put any of your body parts on the internet. Nobody should see anything from your body on the internet because then every energy that they look is going to make you sick. Learn how to keep yourself in wudu, keep yourself under their tarbiyah, under the nazar, keep yourself making salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad to defend that energy and to build that energy inshaAllah. And that's why Allah for every Ya Musabib al Asbab, Allah puts us in that condition, Mufatih Abwab, and then gives us a door to go to. Because the person is in that condition, they found this channel. If you're a person who hasn't had spiritual experiences, you probably tuned out a long time ago from our talks. Our talks are a completely different level of understanding. All, all those people online are people who have had spiritual experiences. Otherwise this teaching is not of interest to other people, they, most of the thing is crazy. But if they had a spiritual experience, these are people who are tasting what the shaykh is talking about and they've searched all their life. They've asked imams and the imams have said, oh you're a crazy person, maybe you should go to hospital. And I've told you every time when Wahhabis would fight us, they would fight the aqidah day and night. As soon as somebody would walk into their mosque and say, we have a problem with this and this, they said, go to that Sufi down the street. <laughs> They know that's out of the realm of their understanding because they're very zahiri. You know, they give you a video on how to wash, that's it. And only wash your hands and feet and toes, that they don't know the, even the secret of the washing. So if they're tuning in, most likely they are having experiences and Allah inspiring them that to understand these experiences, we have schools for that and their understanding of that, inshaAllah. Say there's a person here who's uh, trying to do the meditation. And uh, when they get into the, in the state of meditation, they s forget to breathe, so then they feel like a suffocation. What to do? They get into meditation, they just yeah, yeah, you're, 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 you're. it's really hard to, to truly forget to breathe, but what's happening is there's a euphoria that's happening, an excitement in that energy, and the state of like dying. Just so much energy is coming that they feel they're entering into a state of death. You just have to push yourself just to breathe from your nose. Don't open your mouth to breathe. Learn how to breathe, restricted breathing through your nose. And if the energy become too much, Jalali and Jamali energy. Jalali energy is the ocean of munificence or might. When that energy of might comes, it's crushing. So there's crushing and expanding, crushing and expanding. For every crush when the servant enters into these oceans of energies and they're breathing and Allah is crushing something and lifting. So it's like a rocket. If you ever see the rocket is going coming, the state of crushing is Allah is, is lifting the servant with a tajalli. When Jamali comes, it's now a maqam that they're on a plateau, it's now beatific again. 
And this could be happening daily as they're meditating, that they meditate and again an energy comes onto their heart that crushing their heart, feeling they can't breathe, they're gonna have a heart attack and just breathe through it, breathe through it and you know, if Allah wants you dead, you're dead anyway, so what are you running from? If it doesn't want you dead, you're not going to die. You just keep getting that energy, learn how to breathe through it, through your nose, not to open the mouth and release the energy and begin to bring the power of your breath coming in through your breath because the, the more restricted in your breathing, the breath becomes like a fire and a flame that begins to give a fuel to the energy. And then the constriction comes and then it goes. After difficulty comes ease. As soon as the ease and jamali tajalli, then there's a softness and a softness that dresses the servant, inshaAllah. Just one more, uh, but insomnia, any remedy for that? Insomnia? Yeah. Yeah, are you experiencing a lot of energies and you can't sleep? Because again, these are servants who are watching this, they are in that training whether they wanted it or not. Means that in that training of what we talked at the beginning of the talk of Qiyam al there are servants whom Allah sends a, a lot of energy to them. And by their nature they're not going to sleep often and they're not going to sleep too much. Their souls are more of a vigilant reality that the, they stay awake and they're vigilant and they should be learning how to do their zikrs, uh, watch entertaining things that have a, a message, a reality within them, read, read your Qur'an, do anything that you can do positive and just be comfortable with whatever condition Allah puts you in. You don't need to seek out medicines and, and all sorts of different things. If it, it's energy that is coming to you and Allah doesn't want you to sleep, then you don't sleep. And you do your zikr, your, your, your exercises and practices and pray your Salatul Fajr. After Fajr if Allah grants you a little bit of rest, then rest after your Fajr for hour, two hours, three hours and then go on with whatever Allah wants, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.